everyone, it's Eric here from that. Let's get another video for you guys today. Hope you guys are all doing well. It's a nice uh, summer day. It's been raining all last week, but it's pretty nice. Um, if you guys didn't know, we are located in Northern Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C., in Alexandria, up at Duke Street, and we take uh, MacBooks for uh, liquid spill, MacBooks not powering on, Mac MacBooks for data recovery. Usually any type of issues that you have with MacBook, we're here to help. So we have one of these melons. Uh, if you guys are interested in doing mail-in service, check out the links in the description below. We can help you guys out if you guys want to mail in your MacBook uh, device to us. So we got this one. This is an M1 uh, MacBook uh, Pro. It's in here for repair. And this is the 2020 model, so it's the first M1 model to come out. They actually made two models <laughs> that year, uh, Intel-based MacBook, and then they also made the, the same looking um, M1 MacBook Pro. You can't tell the difference visually by just taking a look at it unless you see the ports or something. You have this uh, USB-C tester and what this is going to do is we like to check to see uh, what's going on with the MacBook, right? So if we didn't know what was going on, uh, we like to see how the MacBook's reacting so we can mentally prepare and just think about what's going on uh, before we even open up take a look. So when we plug it in, let's see what we're getting here. Let's see how the MacBook's responding. We got about 5 volts and about 0.44 amps. So the voltage should be about 20, usually if you look on a USB-C tester, and the amps is the current, and it is very low, it's about 0.4, you see it's going back down. Uh, and that's to power on and also to uh, make the battery uh, charge, right? Because you have to have current for both of those, uh, and it's not doing it right now. So we have both ports, we check both ports because um, both ports can give a different type of reading, which is about the same, it's very low still. Yeah, still very, very low uh, amps reading. We know that this is a problem right now, so we definitely need to open up because we see that there's a clear short, something is going on inside there. So let's go ahead, take a look at it inside and see what's going on. Okay, so we lift this up. And we can tell already that this has been like open before because you can see some uh, strip screws here, you can see a little white there. That usually means that someone struggled uh, opening it up and a real obvious one is the fan connection just is underneath uh, the board. So that's not natural, right? <laughs> so um, we don't see any obvious damage here for it, but if it's been open previously, there's uh, definitely something uh, more intense going on. Maybe someone couldn't do it or something like that. So they just quickly put it back and gave it back to the customers. Let's see what's going on on the other side. Like the Palmer says a good indicator if there will be a spill because if there's a big spill, there's a burn, you'll see it here. So that'll be something you could take a look at. Um, if we take a look at this side, do we see anything? This looks pretty clean for the most part. Don't really see anything obvious there. So since we don't see anything that's visually obvious, uh, we need to go ahead and check uh, the board in another way. A good tool that we like to use here is our thermal imaging tool. It's gonna check to see on a thermal level how the board is reacting to voltage coming in. USB-C connection, that's what that is right there. And we're gonna plug it in, let's see how the board reacts. Oh, we have something here, look at that. Someone's having a party and no one else is invited. I know for certain people this isn't good, so I'm not gonna keep letting this flash too much, but uh, yeah, so we see that there is a party going on here and we need to stop the party. I think it's corroded. Actually, I think I can see it. I think it is corroded. So we see the area. I think I actually do see it from here. Let's go back over there to the microscope. Yes. Yep. So we have, <laughs> and you see it's buried uh, along everything here. It's the only one that's corroded out of the whole entire board. And look at that, right? Now you see how interesting this is? This is the only spot. Right, there is no evidence anywhere else. It just hit this area. Here's your board view of it. This is basically what it is. It's like a map of the board, right? And this is the area that got impacted. We see it's a CN130, but if you have a corroded uh, component that has uh, voltage going through it, it's gonna always uh, cause a problem anyway. And look how many different areas that this um, does connect to. Because uh, when you click these, you can see that there are points on um, a few different sides here. You have, you have two grounds on this one and then you have uh, two connections that go on either side. So let's go ahead and replace the CM130 and um, hopefully that should fix it. If not, then we'll keep going, right? We'll keep digging. Okay, so we removed it. And the pads look good, which is great. I'll put this over here. But we still 
we want to clean it up a little bit, right? Because we want a good clean connection. Clean it all up. It's better to use more flux than not as much flux, right? You can always clean it up. All right, that looks good. All right, so we uh, replaced it. Get my nice pink toothbrush, you know. And uh, let's go ahead, let's check um, how it's gonna show up under a thermal cam. Uh, we should not get the rave party anymore. So it's plugged in and we don't have a short anymore, right? You don't see the rave party and you see everything light up down there. That looks to be the CPUs coming on. Um, looks very normal. And you'll see your CD32, you see how it's lighting up now since I plugged in the top port. And if I flip it over, um, we should get to normal voltage, right? We see, uh, it looks like the sun now. So the CPU is getting warm and we have our power management. It all looks to be normal. It looks to have normal pass through. We fixed the short there, uh, but let's see. If I plug it in here, you guys should see 20 volts because I saw that. Uh, I cheated on the test, guys. Uh, I, saw, I saw it before, but if you plug it in now, we're getting five volts. You see it'll go to 20, right? That looks to be normal. And the amps are pretty low because on based on these MacBooks, these are the M1 models and uh, a lot of the Apple Silicon ones, um, they're ARM based and they have like a power saving feature until you press the power button, you really won't see the amps go up too high. So we can prove that theory too, right? So uh, sometimes they'll power on too until they get to like a login screen. Once you log in, then the amps will go higher, but uh, let's just plug it back into the Mac and then uh, go at it from there. All right, so we put it back, uh, let's plug it in. See if what's going on there. We're getting our 20 volts, which is fantastic. Okay, and the power on, man, pretty quickly. So anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching, doing this uh, repair on this M1 A2338 MacBook Pro, the 2020 MacBook Pro. So if you guys are interested in doing repair with us, again, we're located right outside of Washington, D.C. in Alexandria, Virginia, and we do MacBooks not charging, MacBooks liquid spill, MacBooks uh, not turning on, MacBooks not powering on and also MacBooks for data recovery. If you guys are interested, come on by. If you guys are out of state, uh, we also have a mail-in service. Go ahead, check out the links in the description down below for all that information as well. Anyways, guys, it's a beautiful day. We have a lot of other repairs. We got a lot of other data recovery. Stay tuned for that. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care, bye.